So, when are you planning on coming back? Don't know. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Oh. I was just thinking. How ridiculous you are. You make every effort to plan these little adventures with your good time buddies. But you won't do a single thing for this relationship. Don't start, Jess, okay? You can't expect me just to wait around while you figure things out, Will. Can we talk about this later? Jake's here, all right? Yeah, sure. Right. Jess. Whatever. What'd you do, clean out a whole sporting goods store? Well, I didn't want to forget anything. Yeah, but my wife and three kids, they pack lighter than you do. Wow, someone wake up on the wrong side of the bed? Remember that ski trip up to Canada last year? Or how about that time we were supposed to be wind sailing in Oregon and you had to stop by your ex-girlfriend's house? Oh yeah, what was her name? Looks like I'm driving again too, huh? Look, Jess, it's only going to be for a couple of days. I can't take any more of your adventures, Will. <laughs> There'll be papers for you to sign when you get back. Don't. Don't make this harder than it already is. I'll be at my mother's when you get back. Hey man, I didn't hear anything. But hey, want a beer? <laughs> you do realize it's only 8 in the morning, right? Yeah. To a 9 to 5 like you, I suppose it'd be a little bit early, wouldn't it? Well, I suppose to a guy who hasn't worked in three months, having a beer at 8 in the morning would seem somehow normal. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you're right. in the morning Rolling over in your bed Just tapping you on the shoulder When I'm locked up Just can't cast those doubts away When I'm locked up Gonna find those chances I didn't take
gotta be kidding me. Come on. What the hell are you doing? Man, the game's on and this damn thing won't even turn on. Who'd even thought William Price knew how to chop wood? What do you mean by that? Man, you don't even mow your old lawn back home. So what's that got to do with anything? Never mind. I do a lot when I'm at home. <laughs> okay, mister. I pay people to come over and put my Christmas lights up every year. place, Jake. How come we never come up here before? Oh, I used to come up here a few times as a kid, my dad hunting. But after the divorce, I guess hanging out with dad wasn't a big priority. Oh, sorry, man. Don't, don't be sorry. You know, last year, after he died, I was talking to my aunt, and she said this place was available and no one was using it anymore, so here we are. Yeah, here we are. So, Will. Yeah. You ever kill anything before? What? <laughs> you ever kill anything? Like what? Uh, like an animal, like a living creature. I'm not talking about ants and spiders. I'm talking like a living creature. Well, spiders and ants are living creatures, Jake. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, I killed something once. It's right about the time Jess and I got married. We uh, were heading up to see her parents up in Calgary. Just wanted to take the scenic route up there, and anyway, I was getting tired and trying to make up some time, so I was doing about 85. Anyway, I came around this corner, and here sits this parked RV on the side of the road, and a dark image standing right in the middle of it. Anyway, I was going too fast, and I didn't even have time to react. And before I knew it, there was blood all over the windshield, and Jess was screaming. <clears throat> so I pull off to the side of the road, and, and I step out, and here's this woman with her little daughter. And I'll never forget the look on their faces. I mean, they're... You killed a dad? No, it was, uh, it was the little girl's Doberman, Freddy. Oh, man. Well, I'll tell you what. If you're going to be a hunter, you got to toughen up a little bit. No, you too, huh? What the hell is that supposed to mean? And Jess. She said I'd never, I'd never go through with this hunting thing. So what you're trying to tell me is this is all about proving your wife wrong? No, it... It has nothing to do with it. It's that's it's more about me than being prove to yourself that you're a man. Look, I'm I'm doing this for me. Okay, this is something that, that I need to do for myself. Well, you get to prove it to yourself tomorrow, my friend. Let's not forget why we're up here, Will. And we gotta get up at five AM. Five AM.
Hey, Will! Come on, man. It's 6.30. You're burning up daylight. Hey, we got some time to make some coffee, at least? One step ahead of you, man. Hey, did you hear those wolves last night? Sounded like they were after something. Well, I'll tell you what. Ain't the wolves you have to worry about up here. It's the grizzly bears. Sure is beautiful up here. Yeah, I don't get views like this back home, do you? It's amazing how small it makes you feel being up here. You know, when I used to come up here as a kid with my dad, he said a man spends his whole life looking at himself from the outside in. You come up here in the mountains, and he makes you look at yourself from the inside out. Sounds kind of like a Robert Frost poem to me. Who? So what do they call this area up here anyway? Well, that's Iron Ridge. In the late 1800s, some cavalry soldiers came through this area. Ran into a small tribe of Blackfeet. Well, there's a big argument over land rights and some shots rang out. Most of the tribe was killed instantly. All except for a young boy. They called him Iron Crow. He escaped and the soldiers chased him up on top of a ridge. And just about the time they caught up to him, old Iron Crow looked back, gave him a big old smile and jumped right off the cliff. Soldiers say, since he jumped off he turned to a crow and flew away. You know the Blackfeet say, when a man reaches the end of his life, Better to go out with pride and bravery. It ensures a good passing into the next life. And the fact that Iron Crow turned into a crow. Well, his soul will be free here. Flying here in these mountains for eternity. You really buy into this stuff, don't you? Well, we gotta believe in something, Will. Even if it is against everything that we are. Was that? Oh, this? <laughs> oh, it's a, it's an old knife my dad gave to me before he died. Uh, my grandfather carried it through World War II. So why do you still carry it? Yeah, for luck. See, well, we all gotta believe in something. <laughs> hey, Jake. Yeah. You ever think about getting divorced? Every stinking day of my life, man. No, seriously. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, you and Nancy have been together for what, like, eight years now? I mean, don't you ever think about what it'd be like to be on your own again? Listen, Will. Me and Nancy have problems just like everybody else. Secret is, you gotta get those problems out in the open before they become big issues. You gotta pick and choose your battles. You know, I work my ass off to buy her the things that she needs and wants and... She lives in a nice house, drives a nice car. I mean, the woman buys a new pair of shoes every other day. Maybe it's not the material things Jess needs. It'd be nice if she could just come out and say what she was thinking once in a while. I'm tired of watching what I do and say around her. I just don't feel like the same person anymore. Oh, welcome to marriage, my friend. Hey, you got anything to eat in here, man? <laughs> what? There they are. Who? Two deer. 
Right up there in that meadow. Where? I don't see them. See that big meadow up there on the right? If you look underneath that big ponderosa, there's two deer. Oh yeah, I see them. What do we do now? Well, you see that big draw there? I think if we hike up that draw, we can get in real close to them. What do you think, Will? Why don't we go up there and bring one of them back? Where are we going, Jake? I've got an idea. I want you to go up here, kind of swing around, get up on the ridge behind them. I'll go around this way. Well, what do I do when I get up there? You just wait for me. When I get in position, pick one of them out. I'll wait for you to shoot, and then I'll shoot. Well, how far up should I go? Well, wind's coming out of the south. You stay down close to the bottoms until you get behind them, then cut up on the ridge. About a half a mile. Okay, you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Hey, Will. If you get up there and those deer are gone, I'll go ahead and track them, see where they're going. You meet me back at the truck. We'll go after them later, okay? Hey, Jake.
Jake! Come on, man. If you're playing around, this ain't funny. It's getting late. Come on. Hey, Jake? What are you grinning about? Papa? I've seen that look way too long. You need a new truck, Jim. What do you mean I need a new truck? I like this truck. Old Silver here has been real good to me. I'm glad it's been good to one of us. Hey, it's not my what? fault. What are you saying? I'm fat? I oh, forget I asked. Where are you going anyway? Bowling alley's on the other side of town. I gotta stop down at the office. The office? I gotta stop and pick up my bowling ball. Your bowling ball at the office? I thought I told you I got it. I left it there last week. <laughs> you don't have to hide it. I already know. You know what? Everything. Johnson told me everything earlier today. The cat's out of the bag. I told you about the party, the wristwatch, everything. I can't believe that guy. When I see him tonight, I... Wait a minute. He didn't tell you anything, did he? I'll be so happy when I hear out of my hair for a change. 
You know, you may be the first man in the history of mankind whose retirement is going to benefit his co-workers more than himself. You can't say it hasn't been fun. Well, I guess at your age, that's what they call having fun. <laughs> I want you to act surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surprise party. I don't want to hear it anymore, Carl. You're just not funny. I'm pretty funny. It's just because I've outwitted you about 300 times. Yeah, yeah, right. Hey, you daddy. Hi, sweetheart. Mindy, you been drinking? Hi, here, Carl. Hi, you, Mindy. What the hell's going on? I thought you guys were going to wait. Carl, wait here. So Carl Martin's leaving us. I'm afraid so. I'm going to miss our little chats, Carl. You know, when I was a little girl, I had a huge crush on you. Oh, stop it. No, seriously, I really did. You're a good man, Carl. You've always been there for us. <laughs> Mindy? What the hell's going on, Carl? I don't know. She just... Jesus Christ, don't you remember she's my daughter? I didn't do anything. Are you insane? She's half your age. I... Come on, everybody's waiting. What about... Don't worry about her. You're the one that has some serious explaining to do, my friend. Testing. Testing. First of all, I would like to thank everyone here for coming out and seeing our good friend Carl Martin off. I met Carl some 35 years ago when I was a young, impressionable cadet. Carl here thought it would be a good idea to get the young recruits accustomed to the rigorous living conditions in the Montana wilderness. I remember we hiked eight miles that day into the backcountry. Carl here chose a prime camping location, the pristine setting of a beautiful campsite next to a hidden mountain lake. 
At the time, I remember most of us had never seen anything so blue in our lives. Nor had we ever taken a bath in water so cold. Now, I know you are thinking why we chose to bathe in a lake full of half-thawed ice water. Well, because around 3 in the morning, we all realized that our dear guide, Carl, here had made us lay out our bedrolls on top of one of the worst red ant colonies in the valley. <laughs> you see, Carl wanted us all to know what something as simple as a bedroll placed in the wrong spot in the backwoods can have an adverse effect on the conditions of our health. We all learned a valuable lesson that day. I think the great thing about the ant story is that it applies to life. The simple decisions we make in our lives can affect another's quality of life. A simple hello, a kind passing smile, a cheerful, how are you? And that's why you are so important to us all, Carl. You have affected, or should I say, infected our lives. Each and every one of us and I know I speak for everyone in this room when I say, we are all glad to know you and will be very sad to see you leave. We are just a little worried about taking a wild animal like yourself out of the wilderness and putting you back into society. <laughs> Could everyone please raise their glasses? Here's to 43 years of service, Carl. We salute you. Carl, could you please come up and say a few words? Hey, Jake! Jake! It's been one of the greatest experiences of my life working with all of you. Our job descriptions with the Fish, Wildlife, and Parks is all about the protection of natural resources. But I think it's more than that. I think it's about people. Our environment is just that, our environment. Every rock, every tree, every animal, every person. I think John Muir said it best, tug on anything at all and you'll find it connected to everything else in the universe. There's a lot of truth to that statement. I hope it's a lesson that we can all learn and someday we can teach our children who will teach theirs. I thank you all again for coming. The watch is very nice. Time will have some sort of new meaning for me, I guess. Please feel free to eat and drink as much as you want. The state's picking up the tab. Thank you. Folks, I'm sorry I'm going to have to break up the party. I've just received a phone call from HQ. We have a lost hunter in the Iron Ridge area. Those of you who are with Search and Rescue, need to meet at the Lone Pine Station, ASAP. Sorry I broke up the party, guys. What do we got up there, Jim? 30 male, white, William Price was reported missing by his friend Jake Monroe at 10.18 p.m. this evening. The two men went into the Iron Ridge forest system on a trailhead at approximately 7 a.m. this morning. Shortly after entering the forest, the two men separated. Mr. Price has not been seen since. The report stated he was in good physical condition. No medical problems were stated in his history. His friend said he went in with just his rifle and the clothes on his back. All right, guys, let's get our gear. We'll team up once we get to Lone Pine Station. I want two teams packed and ready to roll at first light. There's something I left out. This guy, William, 
was talking about problems he was having at home before he went out. His friends seemed pretty concerned. You don't think it's a suicide, do you? You remember Dan Brewer? says money doesn't solve everything. Okay, men, we have the Iron Ridge Forest System. Mr. Price was seen in this area yesterday morning. Upon calculation of time on foot, Mr. Price is roughly in an area 80 miles square. If you're not familiar with this area, this is some of the most hostile and rugged terrain in the world. Now, Jim and I have patrolled this area for 40 plus years. We know the area, we know the terrain. I want every man in constant communication and updated team location reports. We're gonna to have to do this one the old school way, fellas, on foot. The chopper is grounded until daylight or weather permitting. So air support as of right now is a negative. It is now zero 200 hours. Go get some chow and some rest. We will break out at first daylight. Good luck out there and thank you. Hey, Mr. Martin. Yes. Hi, I'm Jake Monroe. I'm Will's friend. Hello, son. Hey, is there anything I can do to help? Uh, yes, there is. You could get some rest, Mr. Monroe. We'll find your friend. It's all right. Go ahead. We're here now. Your friend will be fine.
We got snow on the higher elevations last night. It's only gonna get worse. Did you talk to Bill this morning? Yeah. He said he'd be here. Well, I've already sent two teams out this morning above Bitterroot. Are you gonna go up with Bill? No, I'm gonna traverse over to Cherry Flats and see if I can pick up a trail. I hope this guy made it through the night. He'll be number two this year if he didn't. There's Bill now. I know you've been briefed already. I'm gonna send Jim with you this morning. If you see this guy, let me know, and I'll send my ground team over to that area. All right, send forth. Be safe out here, Carl.
somebody, please help me! This is 432. Hey, Raven, you got your ears on? Go ahead, Carl. This is Jim. Jim, I just reached Rocky Point. What's your 20? We just flew over Elk Park. We're going to be heading back to Cherry Creek. Did you guys see anything? Negative. Nah, me neither. I'm worried the snow's going to cover up this guy's tracks. I'm gonna head over to Tranquility Point, see if I can get on top of this guy. You guys keep clipping those treetops. 10-4, we'll be coming up on your six in about an hour. 10-4, over and out. Hey Jim, you out there? I just made it to Tranquility Point. There's no sign of this guy. 10-4, Carl. We made a couple passes over here. Came up empty-handed as well. 10-4. Uh, I'm gonna head down to the beaver ponds and camp there overnight. Negative on that one, buddy. Uh, go again? Negative on the overnight, Carl. We just got a call from base with a direct order to rendezvous with you and transport you back to HQ. What? Chief's orders, pal. Sorry. We'll be at your front door in about 15. 10 4.
need two teams up here by first light. And get me uh, Rory and his dogs, too. Yeah, we're going to need those guys. Yeah, I need those guys here, too. Right. Hey, listen, I'm going to have to get back to you. Make sure I get that report on my desk ASAP. Right. Talk to you soon. Thanks. What is this bullshit? Why did you take me off the line, Dan? Listen, Carl, I know what you're going to say, and I know it took me a couple of days to get up here. A couple of days? A couple hours could mean the difference between life and death, son. Carl, I'm glad you were here to get the search started and get the men lined out, but I'm here now and I'm taking full command of this search and rescue. Now, I don't like being the one to pull you off of this any more than you do, but I've got the safety of my men to think about. <laughs> the safety of your men? Listen, I don't need you up in those woods hiking around and having some sort of medical complication. I have more important things to do than to think about two lost guys up there. Well, it's nice you could take the time to come be with us country bumpkins, Dan. But my health is no concern to you. That is where you're wrong, Mr. Martin. Since I took over this jurisdiction three months ago and the eight stations under its purview, I also became responsible for the men and women who run those posts. And that includes you. <sighs> Look, Carl, you have two weeks until your retirement. Why don't you go home and plan a vacation with your family? You know, go somewhere warm for the winter for a change. Get out and see the world and some of the great new inventions like TV and air conditioning and, hell, I don't know, microwave ovens. You know, I've worn this badge for 43 years. We've traveled a quarter of a million miles together through the rain, the snow, the heat, the mud. We beat a mountain lion attack in 1964. Two broken legs in 67. Three fused vertebrae in 81, a heart surgery in 87, and we beat cancer six years ago. Now this old badge and I may not be much to look at. In fact, maybe we're a little worse for wear, I suppose. But if you think that some snot-nosed kid who is sucking nipples dry, when we were winning a presidential conservation award, is going to tell me and this old badge that we have to walk away from a man lost in the same wilderness that we took an oath to protect, then you don't know me and this old badge very well. Now I have a job to do, son. And I suggest you just stay out of my way and let me do it. Well, that sounded pleasant. I don't have time for pleasantries, Jim. I'm way too old and we still have a man left up there. That chopper's still running? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Carl, it's Mindy. Mindy, what are you doing at the office? Dad asked me to come in and check in on you guys. How's it going up there? Find him yet? Uh, no. Carl, you take care of yourself. You come back in one piece, okay? Uh, yeah. 
Good night, Carl. Good night, Cindy. Jake, what's going on? The police came to the house. They said Will was missing. Where is he? We don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Where's my husband, Jake? I don't know, Jess. I don't know. There's a lot of men out there looking for him. They've, they've been out there all day. I think you should know that they're planning on calling off the search tomorrow afternoon. There's a bad storm blowing in and they don't want to risk any more lives up there. They, they say the temperatures are going to be too low for anyone to survive. Just encourage me Because I more than need you And I can't look another way Would you say that I have sinned? There's no taking this in stride Will we know just where to begin? After all your storybooks have lied Uh, yeah, go for me. Did you have a rough night last night? Uh, no, actually, I slept better last night than I do in my own bed. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> Why's that? That might be just where you're headed. Listen, we got the rest of that storm coming tonight. They're calling it off. That's straight from the top. What do you think, Jim? I saw the report of the storm this morning. It's going to be a bad one, Carl. You don't want to get caught outside on this. Uh, how much time do we have? She's going to be right on top of us this evening. How about we meet on the butte south of Iron Ridge? In a few hours. 10-4. Yeah. Over and out. Where the hell are you, William Price?
Hey, Jim. Go ahead, Carl. I think I found this guy's campsite. Get that chopper over to Sun Meadow. I think it's going that direction. 10-4. Jim, I just made it to the top of Grandview. Listen, do you guys see anything over at Sun Meadow? Negative on that. Listen, Carl, the storm is moving in fast. We're going to have to call it off. We're coming back toward you to pick you up while we still have visibility. We have to know when to call it off. Yeah, 10 4. I think I found him. He's just north of Iron Ridge.
Jump.
Jess, I'm sorry. Everything's gonna be okay. Hi, Will, how are you feeling today? Okay. Well, there's a few people that are waiting outside to see you. Do you mind if I send them in? Okay, I'll send them right in. Jim Franklin. He's the guy that flew you here. Thank you for saving my life, Mr. Franklin. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't been for You don't have to thank me for anything. I'm just glad we got you out of there when we did. But I'm not the one responsible for saving your life. Well, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd kind of like to shake the man's hand who did. That's going to be impossible. Carl Martin's the man that saved your life. He passed away shortly after you radioed your location to us. He, uh, he was my best friend. I'm sorry. You don't have to be sorry. Carl died doing what he loved and believed in. He always said there was no greater example of love and giving love to someone you never met. I guess that's passed on to you now. We're glad you made it home, Mr. Price. That you're gone Even when you're in the road And I know that things are bad And I know the time you've had Won't you let it go oh. I watched you lose the thing you love I felt the crumbling of your heart the sun went inside, lost you in the waning light. Won't you let it go? Let go of the past, cause I can't let go. Let her go. 